So far, I have made several lists to highlight the best games on the Nintendo Switch, including Metroidvanias, Indies, platformers, JRPGs, and more. But I've had multiple people ask me to do a list for the best puzzle games on the Nintendo Switch. And because it is my never-ending goal to help you find good games and to sort out the Nintendo eShop store, considering they still don't have user reviews, I mean, come on, Nintendo, why isn't this a thing yet? But regardless, I do think the Switch has plenty of good puzzle games to play, so here's a list of the top 15 best Nintendo Switch puzzle games. Now, do remember that this is only my personal opinion and that yours may be different, and if that is the case, let me know in the comments below on what your favorite puzzle games are. And before we do get into the list, I do want to preface that in this list I tried to focus on games that has a heavy focus on puzzles rather than games that where, you know, puzzles are just kind of a side addition to the main game. But nonetheless, let's get right into the list. To start off the list, I have Wilmot's Warehouse, which looks pretty simple on the surface. It doesn't have the most glamorous art style in the world, but that doesn't stop Wilmot's Warehouse from being addictively fun. In Wilmot's Warehouse, you will be tasked with organizing and delivering items in a warehouse, and unfortunately for you, you will be the only employee there. At first, it doesn't really seem all that bad. You can organize each item on how you want and then deliver them on a timely basis off the request, but as time goes on, you may find yourself more and more overloaded. This is why you may want to be good at organization, and by the time this game ends, you will more than likely be good at organization, because finding each item on a timely matter is of utmost importance. For those who don't like organizing, though, you may not care for Wilmot's Warehouse, but, you know, I still think this is a really good game and something worth checking out. At number 14, I have Death Squared, though for many this could end up being the most fun on the entire list. The reason as to why I say this is because the game shines in its cooperative gameplay. That is both a blessing and a curse, however. So for fans who are looking for more of a single player experience, there may be better games on this list, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have an enjoyable single player as well. It does with plenty of puzzles to go through, but it's the cooperative gameplay that will have you loving Death Squared. In cooperative, you will have a friend who you must communicate with, and even though the game may start off relatively easy, the end can be extremely difficult as you must stay synced up with your partner at all times. This is why communication is absolutely vital, so not only will it test your mind on how you complete a puzzle, but it will also test out how well you can work as a team. Just be sure you can get along with whoever your partner is because there will be death and plenty of it. She Remembered Caterpillars is a color-based puzzle game where you take these odd little creatures named gammies. Each one of these gammies have their own unique color and must reach their goal in some kind of landscape with several obstacles including bridges that will stop you if you're not the correct color. This is where the game becomes interesting because in order to traverse this level you must work together, change your color by painting yourself or even fusing with another gammy. It'll work your mind and I have to say I do love the art style in this one. It also does have a story though it's not particularly very interesting which is okay considering it has well made puzzles and a lovable art style to pair along with it. The Gardens Between is one of those games that may really take you by surprise. Chances are you may have never heard of this game and sadly that really is a disservice. The Gardens Between is a beautifully crafted game with a lot going for it. The art style pops off the screen with kind of a colorful disorganization. The reason for that is because the Gardens Between revolves around a time mechanic and you must use these time mechanics to solve each puzzle. Some of them can be pretty clever too as you rewind and fast forward time to change the environment around you to reach a previously unattainable destination. It however isn't a very difficult game and because of that, the game is only a few short hours which is too bad. I would have really liked to have played this game more with some more mind bending puzzles, but it is a good experience nonetheless. The Turing Test is our first big 3D puzzle game that plays very similar to games like Portal. The Turing Test never quite reaches those high peaks that Portal does, but it however does take an interesting mechanic in a first person world and runs with it. In the Turing Test you play as Ava who is tasked with one simple goal. Find out what happened with your crew, and in order to do this you will have to navigate from room to room by solving puzzles. 
This is done by transporting energy sources from one outlet to the next, and even though that sounds simple on paper, it's absolutely not. As time goes on, you will be introduced to new mechanics that will make you view each room in an entirely new light. The Turing Test also has a solid story that will ask you to think about humanity and machines a little bit more deeply. Tetris and Puyo Puyo have both been some of the most popular franchises in the world and both also are similar in how they play. Don't let the blocks or colorful blobs reach the top and while both can be fun on their own, they have been in a bit of a slump lately. I mean, how many times can you really play Tetris? Well, Puyo Puyo Tetris not only combines the two hit franchises together, but breathes fresh air into them. There is still that addictive gameplay as you try to dissolve blobs and blocks to combine combos, but the cool thing about Puyo Puyo Tetris is that it has several different modes to play that can be both played competitively with multiplayer or against AI components. It keeps the game constantly changing depending on what mode you play, and for that reason, it's a game that has much more depth than either Tetris or Puyo Puyo as a standalone title. Bridge Constructor Portal may not be the Portal 3 that we all want, but with that said, it's still a really good game in its own right. In fact, I think it's one of the best puzzle games out right now, not only for its puzzle elements, but also for its sense of humor. See, much like the mainline Portal games, GLaDOS will be testing you room to room with her hilarious antagonizing sense of humor. The difference though is you will be trying to get employees to their destination by building bridges and going through several portals. It can be very mind-bending, which is why I consider it such a good puzzle game, but I do love Portal's sense of humor and we get exactly that in Bridge Constructor. Box Boy and Box Girl is one of the cuter titles on this list. While it is all done in black and white, it has this simplistic charm to it and how the characters look and animate. In fact, this is a franchise that has been going on for some time now and was relatively popular on the 3DS, and I was pretty happy to see the newest installment come over to the Switch. In Box Boy and Box Girl, you have the ability to create boxes which will allow you to solve simple puzzles by jumping to higher locations, across gaps, or getting around a hazard. And that is something about this game. It never really offers complex challenges. It does give you new obstacles to overcome from time to time, but there is certainly more challenging games on this list. It however does offer a cooperative mode and another playthrough changing up the formula by using a Rectangle Boy. This does change up how the game is played and I think it's an enjoyable game from beginning to end. I really don't understand why Gorogoa is not a more well-known game. It is a painstakingly beautiful game with a perfect mix of puzzles and story. You know, in a weird kind of way, Gorogoa is almost like a storybook, but instead of reading page to page, you instead will need to solve a puzzle to reveal what happens next. I think that's the best way I can describe Gorogoa, but by paying attention to small details and looking at things in a different perspective, you may happen to find yourself lost in this one-of-a-kind experience. Gorogoa may not be the longest game in the world, sitting at roughly two hours, but in those two hours, you will find a game filled with heart and soul. In all honesty, I could have put several point and click adventure games on this list as they are filled with puzzles, and hey, maybe one day I will make a point and click adventure list. But with Machinarium, the main reason I decided to put it on this list is because the game revolves around its logic based puzzles. There's a lot of variety with these puzzles as well as there isn't a ton of dialogue, and in fact the characters more or less communicate through small bubbles with them acting out a scene. So instead of you choosing different dialogue options, you will primarily focus on puzzles which can be incredibly difficult at times as you travel the world. And honestly, I think Machinarium has one of the most beautiful worlds in all video games, especially if you like the steampunk art style. And it doesn't stop there either because the story itself, while it may not be voiced or even have any kind of dialogue, it's alluring with a lot of charm. I think for Machinarium you will really enjoy the characters and all the different puzzles it has to offer. Snipperclip may have been one of the first Nintendo Switch games on the market, but to this day it's still as unique as it ever was, and because of that it's still one of the best puzzle games for the Switch. In Snipperclip there are several different little crafting paper like creatures that can all cut each other, and while that sounds mean, it really isn't. 
This is how you solve puzzles. It may be as simple as fitting into a puzzle like cutout, or it could be done by scoring a basket into a basketball hoop. Yes, the puzzles are constantly changing, so you too will need to adapt and find new ways to reach your goal. The catch is in its multiplayer, which asks you to work together. Much like Death Squared, Snipper Clip may largely depend on whether or not you want to play a game cooperatively or not, but Snipper Clip excels at what it does. Baba Is You is probably the most unique game on this entire list. In fact, it may be one of the most unique games on the market right now, as I've never played anything quite like it. Baba Is You is a word puzzle game, but not like anything you've experienced before. See, in this game, you will create the rules of how the game is played by pushing word blocks around. Are you confused yet? Well, let me try explaining it this way. If you need to unlock a door in Baba Is You, you do not need to find a key. Instead, you must create a rule that the door is unlocked by pushing around different words. And this is what I like so much about Baba Is You. Some puzzles may be straightforward, while others will have you thinking outside of the box. It's a weird game with its odd art style and unique playstyle, but I think if you like puzzle games and you want something just a little different than something that you're used to, it is a must-have. Captain Toad is the most polished game on this list. After all, this is a game developed by Nintendo themselves. Instead of playing the ever-popular Mario, though, jumping from platform to platform, you instead take a role of the little mushroom dude, Toad. You can't jump, but instead you use the world around you to uncover unseen locations, and then navigate to find hidden treasures. Like many Nintendo games before it, Captain Toad once again has brilliant level design, and I think that is the one thing that really separates it from other games on this list. The puzzle elements itself isn't the most challenging, but from a gameplay standpoint, it's an absolute joy navigating each level and Captain Toad to uncover its many hidden secrets. The first thing you'll notice about the return of the Oberdin is its mesmerizing one-bit art style. Everything is done in black and white, though you can change the color palette, but it's an absolute beauty to behold for how unique and eye-popping it is. With that said, it's also a very intelligent puzzle game if you have the patience to try and solve the mysteries of 60 lives who died upon the Oprah Den. The main mechanic here is that you have a magical pocket watch that allows you to see an instant in time where somebody dies, though solving the actual reasons are never so transparent. As an investigator, you will need to solve these mysteries, and to do so, you will need to investigate each life that are also intertwined. So in order to solve the mysteries, you will need to piece the mini clues together, and in return will come one step closer to telling the story of what happened to the Oprah Den. It gives you a sensation of feeling clever when you do solve a mystery, and because everything is intertwined, you can't just think of one puzzle in a standalone sense. They're connected, so in order to solve a puzzle, you may need to find another clue from another tragic death, and this is why you will need to keep things logged in the back of your mind. Return of the Ober Den at the end of the day is both unique as well as excellent. And number one goes to none other than the Talos Principle. I have often considered Portal the greatest puzzle game to ever be made, but right behind that, I would place the Talos Principle. It puts you in a 3D environment and gives you an assortment of tools to complete different puzzles, and you unlock these tools by finding hidden sigils. And that is one thing about Talos Principle that I absolutely love. It constantly gives you new tools and mechanics that will have you approaching puzzles in new ways, especially early on. See, the Talos Principle is a 20 plus hour long game, so remaining fresh is paramount, but the Talos Principle does exactly that. And these are pretty complex methodical puzzles that will really challenge you, and it doesn't just challenge you by asking you to come up with complex solutions. It also has a really thought-provoking story. You do play as a robot, and oftentimes with robot storylines, it is very philosophical. But I think the Talos Principle is beautifully written, and I think this is one of the greatest puzzle games to ever be made, and an absolute must-play. Anyways, though, that's it for this video, but if I missed any game that you think deserves a mention, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit that bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. We're quickly approaching that 5,000 subscriber mark, so let's see if we can get there. But yeah, peace out.